Well, thank you, Yellick. I say it all the time, but to be a myeloma doctor and have your boss a myeloma patient is a very special phenomenon. And I'm very, very grateful for Yellick and all that he is doing and has done and will do for the IMF. Uh, he did say we have a great team and I'm blessed by this great team. So a couple of quick things as we get launched here. Uh, how many people here have attended one of our patient family seminars here in LA in the past? So I would say at least half, maybe slightly over half. So many of you have been to these before. As Yellick intimated, we are, uh, we've made some changes um, and some um, structural differences. One, because education is constantly changing. I look at my daughters, I have four teenage daughters, and um, I don't know if their attention span is gone or because they watch too many TikTok videos and they can watch it for four minutes, but, but um, instead of having very, very long lectures, we've shortened some things and we've done uh, things a little bit differently, and, and as already been mentioned, we'd love to have your feedback. One of the things that we significantly changed, for those of you here before, you may remember that we typically started the session today with a Q&A session often with a, with a local expert, typically Dr. Vessio, who will now join us uh, tomorrow, and we will do that Q&A at the end, because we found that questions build up over the course of the day and a half that we're together, so you have the opportunity to do that. By contrast, this afternoon, I'm going to spend about the next 15 minutes just giving you an overview, even without slides, because I want them to be so hot off the press that sometimes things happen yesterday and I don't have time to prepare slides to, to give you the hot topics. <clears throat> my disclosure off the start is that I apologize that you're going to have to hear my voice a few too many times today and tomorrow, but only in small bits, hopefully. Uh, but hopefully it will encourage you and um, educate you. As, as Yellick said, our goals are threefold this weekend. We want to educate, we want to connect, and we want to inspire. If we're not doing those three things, you tell us, or you tell us how we can do it better. Educate, connect, and inspire. It's, it's a lot of information to come in, so hopefully there'll be lots of education. My goal and objective is to make the redonkulously complicated things of myeloma understandable and comprehensible, no matter what your level of understanding is here today that will have high hanging fruit and low hanging fruit, that we will connect you, connect you to the IMF and to all the great resources that we have, but importantly also to connect you with each other, to, to meet other people going through the same journey that you're going on. And then thirdly, to inspire you. Uh, genuinely, with the kind of hope that Yellick shared, it's amazing to start a meeting like this with someone who has had myeloma for over 28 years. You know, I've had the privilege of being a myeloma doctor for, for nearly that amount of time. And, and I don't say it to, to be melodramatic, but I don't know if I, have thought, if I have seen a more exciting time in myeloma than right now. Uh, in fact, as I think about these hot topics that I could cover with you, uh, no exaggeration, one, because doctors, we can ramble on and on forever, but, but I could come up with 15 easy topics for me to share with you this afternoon, but I've narrowed it down to three. I just want to highlight three things that are hot topics because there is so much going on around the whole of the world. Remember, the I in IMF is international. And so we have the privilege of bringing the greatest minds and scientists and clinicians and patients from around the world to think together about how do we conquer this disease and how do we do it in a way <clears throat> that allows people, as Yellick shared with us, to, to not just focus on, uh, on not dying, but to live and enjoy the life to their fullest potential. So lots of different things. I could tell you about the research we're doing in labs. I could tell you about big clinical trials. I could tell you about all sorts of new initiatives that you're going to be hearing a little bit about over the course uh, of the weekend. Maybe we can go back a slide. There we go. Um, but these three things are the three things that I think are right now particularly hot in the world of myeloma, and you're going to hear about them over the next day or so. Number one is more drugs up front. What do I mean by that? We're going to be talking for a couple of minutes about how we're seeing more and more combinations of drugs in frontline therapy. For, uh, for those uh, here tomorrow morning, and I hope you'll all be here tomorrow morning, we will have a breakout session um, where uh, a group of individuals who are more interested in understanding frontline therapy will go uh, with Dr. Dr. Sagar Lonial, and he'll share with us uh, a little more detail of what I'm about to share with you in frontline, and the rest will stay here and have a relapse session with Dr. Dispensieri. 
But, but when you think about this more drugs up front, we've now just seen a whole series of clinical trials that have demonstrated the validity of combinations up front. I'll come back to that. Topic number two, Bella is back, if I can use those words, or Belantamab Mafidotin or Blenrep. You've heard it used different names. This is a drug that was approved, then withdrawn, and we do think it's coming back, and I'll explain why. And then hot topic number three, less is more. Less is more, and I'll explain what that is in just a minute. So let's start with number one. So number one was uh, more drugs up front. What do I mean by that? Well, back um, you know in the dark ages when I studied myeloma uh, at, in in uh, in my training, we used to have one, maybe two drugs for myeloma. That was one of the reasons why, sadly, people didn't live very long. But now people, of course, are living much longer and thankfully much better with myeloma as a result of all sorts of different drugs that we've developed. And I'm not going to get necessarily into the specifics of them as much as to understand as the, the concept that myeloma is a complicated disease. That's why we think of it as multiple myeloma. It's really multiple diseases in one. And it's not something that you can just fix with one drug. And um, what we've come to appreciate is that when we use different drugs together, we have that strength in numbers, but also by different ways of attacking the myeloma. <clears throat> I think of a disease like HIV that had claimed so many lives and still does to, some, to a certain extent, but we've really overcome much of the, of the challenge of HIV, not because we found one drug, but because we found the right combination of drugs together. We're trying to do that in myeloma. So more recently, and you'll hear more about this from Dr. Loniel, who were in your session, we've had three in particular very large, we call phase three trials. If you're not familiar with the phrase phase three, stick around this afternoon. Yellick and I will explain it to you. But these are, are very large trials where um, two different strategies are compared. And in all of these trials, three drug combinations were compared to four drug combinations. And the simple result was that four was better than three. And I know that doesn't sound shocking, right? Uh, typically four is better than three. But what was important was we were able to give those four drugs together. Because there's always a concern when you, when you come with different ways of attacking the myeloma. That sounds great, but also comes with different side effects. And so using these in the right combination. So we had uh, a clinical trial uh, called the Perseus clinical trial, which compared the standard regimen we've historically used, VRD, or Velcade Revlimidexamethasone, and it added daratumumab to it, or Darzalex to it. And we saw a, a very significant benefit of adding the Darzalex to the VRD. And that's really become the new standard of care now in patients who are eligible for transplant. What was remarkable is we saw the same thing even in those patients typically not going to transplant. Uh, so we've had now a, a, a very similar clinical trial adding this time esituximab or sarclisa, which is a, another kind of a monoclonal antibody. We'll explain what those are later. Um, similar to Darzalex, uh, esituximab being added to VRD versus VRD alone. Uh, and we saw, uh, similarly in that trial, a benefit even in those patients who are typically older and not eligible to go to transplant. And there was yet a third trial called the Benefit Trial, which also used esituximab VRD, and this time compared it to just esituximab with RD or with Revlimid and dexamethasone. And in all of these cases, four was better than three. <clears throat> and although, of course, when we take more drugs, it comes with potentially more side effects, we're getting much better at managing them and reducing their, their, the toxicities, as we call them, and we'll explain a little bit more. So for those of you who may be early on in your journey, you're likely going to see a greater combination up front. And the hope is that if we give more up front, then we can actually give less over time. I'll come back to the less is more concept in a minute, but it's not like it's for forever. The idea is let's, squ let's squish this disease down to almost nothing, and then patients can go on to lesser therapy and ultimately as some of us were chatting at the break on my favorite therapy, nada, nothing, right? I love giving my patients nothing, right? It's a great prescription to fill. Every insurance company approves it. Everybody is 100% adherent to it. Everybody loves getting nada. 
All right, so that was, that was hot topic number one. Hot topic number two, Bella is back. Belantamab mafodotin, or Blenrep, was a drug, <clears throat> the first of its kind in myeloma, called an antibody drug conjugate. What does that mean? Again, Teresa and I are going to do a quick myeloma 101 later, where we have a little back and forth describing the mechanisms of drugs. But in simple terms, this is a drug that hooks onto the myeloma cell based on something that's sticking out of the myeloma cell called BCMA, or B-cell maturation antigen, and I think of it this way, it has a backpack with it, and this backpack has got a toxin in it or something that's very toxic to the myeloma cell, and it can drop that backpack into the cell. The drug was approved a number of years ago, um, and typically, again, I'm not going to give you a whole lesson on how drugs get approved in this country, but it gets approved by what we call accelerated approval, meaning if it can prove that it has some benefit typically on its own, then the drug gets approved until a larger clinical trial is done where it is compared. Well, the the comparing trial that was done did not... uh, turn out to be positive, meaning it didn't show a a benefit over the standard of care, so the drug was withdrawn. But two other clinical trials were already in development, the large phase three trials, the the DREAM trials as we call them, DREAM 7 and DREAM 8, and those just read out over the last couple of months. And in each of those situations, we saw that belantamab had uh, a significant benefit. Dr. Dispensieri will talk about this more in detail tomorrow, but I'm just giving you the appetizer. I'm the appetizer. They're the main dish, right? So I'm just giving you the little preview to it. But this drug is very important, and we believe, because it is quite easily administered. It's just given IV in the clinic. Um, It doesn't require the collection of T cells. It doesn't uh, have a a lot of challenge in giving it. It does have some side effects, in particular, the way it can affect people's eyes. But again, we've learned a lot about this and how to dose it and how to reduce those kinds of side effects. So it's not quite ready to return to the clinic in prime time. It's going through the usual regulatory process through the FDA and so on. But I think we all believe that belantamab will be back. And it's good because we want choice for our patients. And then lastly, less is more. What do I mean by that? If you look at almost any drug we have in myeloma, it has gone through an evolution from when it was first approved. And again, I'm not going to go through a lot of detail of how we approve drugs, but drugs are typically uh, approved through a process. I do a lot of what are called phase one trials, uh, where we do, um, where we test a drug to see what is the right dose of this drug. And the general premise is, the more I give, the better the patient's going to respond. So, so a phase one trial typically starts with really a tiny dose, like just smell the bottle, right? Barely get any of the drug. But then as we build up to the dose, we build up to what's called the maximum tolerated dose, or MTD, where we feel that there aren't so many side effects that would prevent us from being able to give this drug, but we give it on the premise that more drug is better. And and typically with older style chemotherapy, you know, the bald and barf kind of chemo, that's generally true, right? The more you give, the more cancer cells you could destroy, the better it's going to be. But If you look at the history of myeloma, almost every drug that's gotten approved over time as we've gotten to use it, we've actually reduced how much we give. We've gone from giving Velcade twice weekly to once weekly, or Carfilzomib from twice weekly to once weekly, and Selenexor from twice weekly to once weekly. We've gone from giving certain drugs IV to giving them subcutaneously.